Today, I'll be speaking about a person who was the acting boss of a family, a family that's believed to have inspired the hit series, The Sopranos, and more specifically, whose main character, Tony Soprano, was supposedly molded from Vincent Vignosian Palamo. To begin with, the Di Cavacante family is considered to be a New Jersey-based family, precisely northern New Jersey, although they're known to have crews based in New York and Connecticut as well. Some even refer to them as the Six family. Vinny Ocean Palamo is very interesting. He actually hailed from Brooklyn, as did quite a few of the Di Cavacanti members. At a fairly young age, he began making both legitimate and illegitimate money while working at the Fulton Fish Market, a market that sold wholesale fish to retailers and restaurants. It's commonly known that the Genovese family controlled the market and did so going as far back to the days of the family's namesake, Vito Genovese. But with that said, all of the families had an interest in the market. Vinny Ocean eventually moved on from the market and into a personal business, a fish store in Brooklyn, unsurprisingly named Ocean Fish. Speaking of which, it was through his involvement in the fish industry that he acquired his nickname. Prior to his career at the Fulton Fish Market, he married a relative of Simone Sam the Plumber di Cavacante, and not long after, he was proposed by his father-in-law and di Cavacante member, Robert Ochipinti. Following his induction, he was placed in the crew headed by Jimmy Rotundo. Years later, in January 1988, Rotundo would be killed in front of his Brooklyn home. Vinnie Ocean also had a brother, Patsy, who became a member of the Colombo family. Sam the Plumber spent 1971 to 1973 in prison, and after his release, he retired to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and made John Riggy the acting boss of the family. On July 28, 1978, Vinnie Ocean, along with his brother Patsy, killed their uncle, which was their mother's brother, over a family inheritance. Patsy Palermo would pass away himself in 1984. By the late 80s, Vinnie Ocean was doing quite well for himself. Besides street rackets, he owned several businesses, to name a few, a car dealership, a car wash, a restaurant in Queens, a floating casino, and a strip club called Wiggles that was located in Forest Hills, Queens. On a side note, if my memory serves me correctly, he also had two partners in the strip club, Vito Guzzo and Joe O'Kane. At the time, Vito was a member of the Giannini crew, and Joe was a Gambino associate. Wiggles was also on a hit list of then Mayor Giuliani, who felt that sex shops and strip clubs were violating New York zoning laws. The late 80s were turbulent times for the De Cavacantes. During this time, the family was selling stolen Viagra pills online, as well as a fake screenplay of The Wizard of Oz. They also was producing fraudulent vintage comic books that they flooded the comic book collector's market with. Nevertheless, besides making money, the family would experience big problems internally. In September 1989, Gambino boss John Gotti requested that the De Cavacantes kill someone named Fred Weiss, a former journalist and real estate developer. Gotti believed Weiss would become an informant on a case involving a Gambino waste management company. John Riggi sanctioned the hit, and on September 11, 1989, Weiss was shot and killed in front of his Staten Island home. It's believed that Vinny Ocean and James Gallo were the shooters on the Weiss hit. Vinny Ocean would be given a captain's position following that murder. On October 16, 1989, acting boss John Riggi was arrested and indicted on a racketeering case. Initially, he appointed John D'Amato to replace him as acting boss, but D'Amato's time was short-lived, as he was exposed for allegedly being bisexual and disappeared in January 1992. Eventually, Riggi implemented a ruling panel, which consisted of Vinny Ocean, Guillermo Palamo, no relation, and Charles Maggiore. However, Maggiore felt he was above being just a panel member and decided to make a move to become boss. By planning to eliminate his fellow panel members, Vinny Ocean caught wind of Maggiore's plans and in turn plotted to hit him instead. He dispatched two of the Cavacante associates, Ralph Guarino, and Joey O'Masella to do the work. But the two-man hit team would call it off after being spotted by a neighbor as they laid on Majori's house. On January 14, 1998, Guarino would mastermind a big robbery that took place in Manhattan. $1.6 million was stolen by three men 
from the Bank of America at One World Trade Center. Guarino waited outside in a getaway car that was parked across the street. The comical part of the robbery is even with inside information, they stole the wrong bags. The bags that they took contained foreign money. All three robbery suspects were eventually arrested, as was Guarino, who quickly agreed to become an FBI informant. Joey O. Masella, who was close to Vinny Ocean and often acted as his driver, became a liability due to a gambling habit where he racked up loans that exceeded up to $450,000. Loans owed to various wise guys, including members of the Gambino family. At one point, Vinny Ocean was so fed up with Masella that he literally kicked him in the balls and told him, you know, by rights, I got to kill you. During a tape call, he once referred to Masella as a fucking asshole and a sick, stupid, retard lowlife. On October 10, 1998, Masella was found shot to death in his car, parked at the Dyker Park golf course in Brooklyn. His murder would be one that Vinny Ocean would later be charged with. As a newly minted informant, Guarino began handing out surveillance-equipped cell phones, courtesy of the FBI, to most of the Cavacante members, Vinny Ocean in particular. Aside from information that he provided, he would also wear a wire for the FBI. For years, Guarino taped the Cavacante members, as well as the usually closed-mouthed Vinny Ocean, who spoke to him about a murder he was planning, as well as other murders, extortion, gambling, etc. Guarino was proposed to be inducted, but the FBI pulled him off the streets before that could take place. This was the result of a leak that compromised him. According to reports, Genovese Captain Fritzi Giovanelli possessed information that was passed to him by a stenographer regarding Guarino's confidential informant status. Naturally, Giovanelli spread this news around organized crime circles. Armed with mountains of evidence, on December 2, 1999, the FBI arrested 39 people. 15 of those arrested were members of the DeCavacante family, including Vinny Ocean. He faced charges of racketeering, including several murders, conspiracy to murders, extortion, loan shocking, gambling, and the usual gamut of charges. Up to that point, his only arrest was for stealing shrimp at the Fulton Fish Market. Facing the death penalty, or at the very least life in prison if convicted, Vinny Ocean Palamo made the decision to begin cooperating. His future testimony would cripple the Tecavacante family. By October 2002, he would plead guilty to four murders, seven murder conspiracies, extortion, loan shocking, gambling, and charges of obstruction of justice. In 2003, during the trial of three Tecavacante captains, it came to light that Vinny Ocean failed to report that he handed over $1.7 million, which was profit from Wiggles, to his son. As part of his agreement with the government, he was required to forfeit any ill-gotten gains. As a result of this revelation, he almost had his cooperation agreement torn up. He also disclosed a funny incident during that trial, which involved his wife at the time putting out a garbage pail that had $700,000 in jewelry in a bag hidden beneath the garbage. The following week, Vinny Ocean and a few guys confronted the sanitation workers outside his house. With guns pointed to their heads, they demanded the jewelry back. But the workers swore that they knew nothing about the jewelry, and they let them go. I like to quickly mention the Super Thanks icon found beneath this video for anyone who'd like to show appreciation for videos such as this. And I thank all of you who have used it and all of you who will. Ultimately, Vinny Ocean served about two years in prison before entering the Witness Protection Program and being relocated to Texas. It would come to light years later that Vinny Ocean started his new life in Houston, Texas and was back in the strip club business as well as a Mexican restaurant, Rucci's Grill, and the Super Clean Car Wash. He ran these companies under a corporation named Here We Go Again, Inc. He had two strip clubs that were in the seediest section of Houston, the Penthouse and All Stars Cabaret. In 2008, the Penthouse was shut down due to several violations of the city ordinance. It was cited for prostitution and drug dealing, and Vinny Ocean just shifted the dances over to the All-Star Cabaret, which was located directly across the street. But by September 2008, the penthouse reopened its doors. While in Texas, Vinny Ocean, to some extent, changed his look and was using a different name, James Cabela. He was living in a palatial home on Memorial Drive. Nonetheless, 
on March 4, 2013, he filed for bankruptcy. And in September 2015, he put the Memorial Drive home up for sale for $2.5 Presently, he lives at a more discreet location.